So good morning, welcome. Thank you all for attending. Um, today is uh, policing Apache project brand use by third parties. So the intent is for PMCs and committers to know what to do when other people use your brand. So, uh, and there are actually a lot of details with this that most people aren't, don't really think of to start with. So introduction, my name is Shane Kirkru. I serve as the Vice President of Brand Management. So this is a volunteer position that's appointed by the Board of Directors. Um, so my job at the foundation is to create and implement trademark policy for all projects. So the Apache brand is part of the Apache Software Foundation, the whole thing. And that includes every software project. Now, of course, you all have your own parts of your own brand for that, too. But the policy comes from the ASF. Um, so I've been involved at Apache since 1999, which is only a few months after they incorporated, actually. And I'm not actually a lawyer, although sometimes people tell me that I talk like one. The most important thing is any questions for this or anything else to do with brands or trademarks or you know, even related legal questions would be on trademarks, which is a privately archived list. So you can send embarrassing questions and it's fine. So what I want to talk about today, um, the most important thing in terms of education that I need to provide to projects is that um, some of the basics about trademark law, because trademark law is not obvious. So even projects who get it and who really want to promote their project brand and have a brand and get it out there, they often don't really get the bits of the law that actually are important to a lot of the companies who might be trying to use your brand. The companies are thinking of this. They have lawyers. We have me and a few lawyers. Um, so how to manage Apache project brands, all of your brands here, in particular, what we really need PMCs to do yourselves, what you should do together with me and the rest of the Trademarks Committee in terms of being the formal voice for Apache, and what you have to let me as the vice president of the corporation do on behalf of the PMC. Because sometimes there are legal issues and you can't, you know, there are very few people who can speak authoritatively on behalf of their project. Really, it's the, the vice president of the project because they're an officer of the corporation. So trademark concepts in 30 seconds. So is anybody here a lawyer? And you can raise your hand. You can admit it. We won't. OK, good. Because uh, otherwise, the lawyers would just you know, start laughing as soon as I did this. So what are trademarks? So we all kind of have an idea. But we have an idea of what most people think trademarks are. That's fine. Lawyers, very different idea. So a trademark is the legal instantiation of your brand. So it's, you know, create a new class and then instantiate it, and that's it. The most important point is trademarks are about preventing consumer confusion as to the source of goods within a specific field of commerce. So we think of, hey, it's our, you know, we love CouchDB, we came up with this great logo, you know, it's ours, it's really cool, and we know what it is. That's great. Trademarks aren't really to help us. Trademarks are really to help people who use our software know that when they use something that looks like Apache CouchDB, it actually came from the Apache CouchDB project. So um, again, we think of what the brand is. Of you know, We know what it, it is, and we know what the, the home page looks like. But really, you have to think of it from the point of view of a new user coming to your project's website for the first time ever. What is the specific name and logo that they see when they're like, hey, I want some software, I want to download it. When they're going to download it, what's the specific logo they see? And what's the specific bit of software that they get? Because trademarks are really about goods, as in commercial goods, as in a Macintosh laptop or a Westin hotel. Um, that's the legal part of trademarks, which we don't always think about because we're enmeshed in it all. We created these brands. So a brand includes all sorts of elements, the name, the logo, look and feel of your website, look and feel of your product UI when a user is running it. Um, but they're legally bits of a brand, some of which are sp specifically trademarked, some of which are not, that refer to that software product. Not to the project, not to all the rest of the look and feel, not to the people, but the actual software product they put in the machine and it does something for them. So your project name the Apache CouchDB project is not necessarily a trademark. It may be a service mark because we provide advice at the project. What's a trademark is 
the Apache CouchDB software. That's a trademark. So really silly but important for the lawyers, trademarks are adjectives. So I buy Kleenex brand tissues. That is how a lawyer would say when they need to blow their nose. Now, of course, we never do, but to lawyers, it's important. We run Apache Lucene software and Apache Hadoop software. So for the lawyers, it's important that on our homepage and on our download page, the first time that we list these things, we say them in the proper form. Because that's when some lawyer or a trademark examiner looks, they do a search, they go to couchdb.apache.org, they see, you know, the Apache CouchDB software provides a great non-relational database. Okay. Um, the rest of the time, it really doesn't matter. You know? Yeah? I'm just curious because we have the copyright symbol for Hadoop and Kleenex, but Lucene is trademarked. No, I have the trademark symbol by Lucene and the registered trademark by Kleenex and Hadoop. That's an R, not a C. Sorry if it's not clear enough. Uh, Hadoop is a registered trademark of the Apache Software Foundation in the United States. We have applications um, currently being processed in the European Union and five other countries right now. Oh, yeah, that's it. So one big thing is people often come and say, you know, oh my god, so-and-so is talking about Lucene and they say it sucks. We should stop them. No, that's fine. Nominative use is kind of like fair use for copyright. So you can quote part, a passage of a book in a review and, and that's legal, even though somebody has copyright. You can quote part of somebody's UI or user manual if you're talking about it in a small way. Nominative use means we have a trademark that refers to something. We have an elephant that's yellow and cute and refers to Apache Hadoop. If people want to tell their friends about it, they have to say, hey, I love that yellow elephant. So they have to be able to say, I use Apache Hadoop software. That's OK. That's nominative use. So it allows people to post bad reviews. So I used Apache Hadoop, and it lost all my data. Yeah, because they're referring to the item itself. So personal blogs, newspaper articles, the press often doesn't get it right. Mailing list discussions, certainly. They're almost always nominative use, because infringement, which is a when somebody's infringing, we, we have to address it. You know, there, there's legally, there's the problems, the completely not problems, and the big space in between. And really, most of the time, it's over here. It's very rarely over here. The only time that actually gets here or close to here is when somebody new reading that page might think that the other person is providing Apache Hadoop software. So you're misleading the person who's reading it to who creates that product. So registered trademarks. Um, <clears throat> common law rights accrue from use. So when, when you start a project, there's a little trick. There's a date when you came up with the name and you started talking with other people about it. You said, hey, we're going to get together and do this food project. There's another date when you have a public web page that says, download my food project here. That's the first time you use the trademark in commerce. So that's the first time that the name was given to some product that a new user could go download and use. Um, so from that date, you get some rights to that name because you've been providing a good, presuming that you continue to do it. Um, if you register that right with the national registries in every different country, they're all different, it's a big mess, um, you get many more rights. It's sort of a, an assumed presumption that you then own it because you've registered it. The examiner looks at it like a patent, not as detailed, but so. Um, most Apache product names are not currently registered. However, that is changing. It's clear the industry is moving faster and more and more software vendors are happy to capitalize on our good brand and misuse it. And uh, we're gonna take care of that by registering many of our names. So some people say, but it's open source. I can do whatever I want. The point of the Apache license is do whatever you want. We don't care, right? There's a section in the license that says explicitly trademarks are not included. I just put that in. Hopefully, it's not important to us, but if any of your managers say, oh, but it's Apache, I can do this anyways. No, it's not. So 
PMC branding responsibilities. These are things that you as project participants, I mean, technically the PMC, but any committer, hopefully, will, will help out with this kind of stuff. Most important thing is be responsible about your brand. It's not just this cool thing that a bunch of you are collaborating on the mailing list. It's a product of the Apache Software Foundation. So, you know, the goal of the Apache Software Foundation is to provide software for the public good. So the more software we give away, the more public good we do. So it's the people who are using the software that's really the mission of the ASF. So obviously you're all doing it because of your job or it's a good job you know, experience, whatever. But be responsible about thinking about the brand and how other people see it and use it. Um, so a, a key one is we really need PMCs to understand how your brand is being used by third parties because I can't do that, and even the members who help volunteer with me to manage brand management can't possibly do that. You know who the vendors are. You know who this you know, new consultancy is who's started up something that, you know, hey, we give the best support for so-and-so. We need you to be aware of those, and if any of them are causing a problem, then raise it. So I don't, I don't think that's been, we haven't worked enough with enough PMCs, and there are new PMCs every month, that I don't know that everybody's gotten that yet and I need to do a better job of that. And I don't assume that third-party uses are approved. If something looks funny to you, then you need to raise it. Um, being consistent, which is kind of the, the boring part, and the, the lawyers ask about this. So your use of your product brand is the reference implementation. So it's important, especially in the first and most prominent uses on any major landing page, not just the home page, other major landing pages, Download page, Apache Foo, you know, trademark, software does this, right? Describe it as, using it as an adjective. Um, with an attribution, a TM or, or an R, depending on what the status is. Um, after the first and prominent uses, the rest you can just say Hadoop software, or Hadoop does this, that's fine. But the, the thing that for somebody first reads needs to be proper. And hopefully ensure consistency on the other parts of our presence to the world you know, JIRA and mailing list pages and, you know, download PDF sheets that somebody has for an install guide. It'd be really nice if those, you know, also had the proper branding. I mean, that's, to a degree, that's up to the project. If you want to just have a text file, how to do it, or if you want to have a nice screen that says, hey, here's how our project works. I just put this in, trademark law is not a compiler. So the general consumer perception is what's important. So I can't just, I don't have a rule other than the first and most prominent use of if you do this, then the lawyers will be happy. Um, it's really what a new user coming to your project thinks your project is calling itself and doing. Um, so be aware, well, I talked about this a little bit earlier, but this is really what we really need PMCs to do is understand how other companies, other open source foundations, um, you know, other independent consultants, basically other businesses, bloggers, I don't care about really. Because nobody's going to go to a blog that has all these reviews, even, even in-depth reviews, and think that that blogger is going to say, hey, download CouchDB software from me. People will know it's from Apache, typically. But a business is different, because they often probably sell other software products. So, so they have a little row that says, you know, download the you know, Super Accelerator, download the File Manager, download CouchDB. And somebody will then assume CouchDB is theirs. And that would be an infringement. Um, so we'll talk about actually contacting people and doing something about it a little bit later. So being respectful. So when we talk about trademarks, especially if we're talking about talking with somebody who is not a geeky committer on one of our lists, perhaps a marketing person or a CEO of some small company who wants to get interested, uh, we need to be respectful because they are not a regular project participant. They often are people, you know, typ the typical wearing suits. And they expect a different level of interaction and RTFM is not usually a good thing to do. So hopefully anything dealing with brand, we can be respectful in how we communicate and especially being respectful of other organizations' trademarks. So really, I mean, I don't really care about Oracle because, you know, nobody really likes Oracle. But when we have all these Java projects, we should really say Java with little r, 
And at the bottom of the page, we should say job as a trademark of Oracle, because that's how you recognize other companies' trademarks, as you attribute them. You say, blah, 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 I use Java to do this. And somewhere you say, I recognize that Oracle owns Java, and they provide it. Um, so, and if somebody complains to us, either about our use of their marks, or about how we're using marks of our own, we need to be careful to respond professionally and calmly. Because in the very, very rare case, if it turns out that this is from a company who is not friendly, and if they pursue it and it goes up to a lawyer, the lawyer is going to read all the threads about this with the lawyer's hat on. And you need to you know, not make flippant jokes about, yeah, yeah, we know job is that, but it sucks anyways. Just not a legal issue probably, but it's uh, uh, an image one. So <clears throat> this is bigger than branding. This is part of what does the Apache brand mean? So actually, I should have that slide in here. So you all have your own project brands. And that's great. But you are also part of the Apache brand, which is something that I define with all of the members of the foundation and, and all the board directors going back in history. That's what we want all of our projects to be part of. And part of that is independent community-led projects. So this essay, really what I wrote on the community development website, is a requirement for projects at Apache. Because the definition of an Apache project is a community-driven software project that works openly that is hosted at the Apache Software Foundation. So if someone at some other organization or at some company is running some software and they have email lists and they you know, put out stuff and they say, yes, we're an Apache project. They are not. By definition, they are not. So the Apache brand to PMCs means you need to present an independent face to the project. Because the goal of the foundation is to produce software for the public good. Now, all of you in the PMCs are actually doing that for us, right? That you're doing the job. I'm, I'm not doing that. I'm not writing software, unfortunately. So it's critical that we present the face that we are independent, that all of our projects are independent. Um, because that means that um, for Hadoop, that if you know, the world really saw Cloudera as controlling Hadoop, which maybe that's a bad idea because some people think that, um, then why would other vendors bother to you know, consider coming along with the project and trying to influence it? Projects need to be presented as an independent so that other people say, hey, I like that product. It looks like it's independent. If I show up, they would listen to me and let me participate. And that's a critical way that we get new contributors. More contributors means more software. More software means more public good. So that's our mission. And a key one at the bottom is independence means the Apache Foo product performs a useful function as is. So a user needs to be able to come to foo.apache.org from our website, learn enough about the project to say, I want it. How do I download it? How do I install it? And when they're done, it will do something useful. Now we have plenty of vendors who, you know, build such and such on top of a patchy foo. They have plugins or they have an install script or whatever. That's great. That's important for everybody. But the core product has to do something useful by itself. We can't have a vendor who puts in, who gives us this framework with, you know, three modules, but no way to initialize it. And then they sell the initialization module. That's not acceptable because it doesn't help us or the public. So I've been lecturing about you about what we expect you to do, not that we're you know, paying anybody or do you give you anything else besides commit bits, but um, what do we do together? Um, <clears throat> huge, huge thing to remember, police brands privately. So when there is a potential trademark issue, do not tweet it. We ask somebody, especially if it's a third party, you know, misusing our Lucene brand, you don't just yell it. You say, hey, privately, you find the right person. We don't think this is appropriate. We would like you to change it. Um, whenever you contact a third party about a trademark issue, I mean, unless it's like your coworker who you've known forever and you're just asking them in the hall, always CC trademarks because I want to make sure that we are aware of it until you know, I understand that enough PMCs know how to do this. Um, because most situations are resolved by a few private emails. 
in a large number of cases, the other organization who is doing this crazy thing with our Lucene brand, we bring it up to them. Sometimes we have to you know, bump it up to the right person in the organization. And they say, man, my bad. You know, I want to support you. Uh, of course, I'll change that. So assuming ignorance, ignorance rather than malice, that goes a long way too. And a lot of times, even if they meant to you know, really promote the heck out of their super accelerator Lucene thing, they'll say, okay, you know, I understand, and they'll fix it. So that allows everybody to save face, doesn't blow it up. And in particular, sometimes people come to us and ask ahead of time, hey, can I do this? Is it okay? I'm fine if they do that privately because they may have a marketing campaign they want to launch, um, but they don't want to leak beforehand. And they want to ask before they try it, right? If we made them ask on the dev list, then if I said no, it would be embarrassing. And then it's just signaled their intentions. So this is one of the few cases where we should opt for a private exchange rather than public. There are very few places where an Apache project should be private in their mails. Talking about people voting on new committers, um, this, anything the lawyer, emails, things like that. I mean, if, if the first, you know, if some user writes on dev saying this company is really screwing its stuff up, we respond saying, okay, thanks for the, thank you for the report, and we will investigate it, and then we'll deal with it privately. Uh, so again, be professional, professional and polite. Um, a lot of the, a lot of the other people that we're talking to, if we have a problem with a third party misusing or potentially infringing, I'm saying potentially infringing because we don't really know yet. I don't want to say you're infringing on our brand because maybe legally they're not. And even if they are, it's still more polite to say, we think you might be infringing. Could you please fix it? Um, we do need to be firm when we contact somebody. So if we have a clear case of them sticking two brands too close together or implying ownership or something, we need to say, hey, this is our brand. This is not acceptable. We need you to fix it. How are you going to do it? And we wait for them to respond. And it, it's a process of them saying, you know, I didn't know, or I think this is okay because of this. Well, we can address that. But, so it's a process of communication, but it, it usually works just from the private discussions. Um, one thing, we have to be specific. So you can't just say, I heard that you were you know, selling Lucene super thing. That's not okay. You have to have a specific, we need, you need a publicly seeable web page or PDF white paper that has been sent out in an email blast or something. Some actual example of what it is. See, you know, your logo here, our logo here, saying download it now, that's not okay. Um, if you're not specific, then you know, you'll say, well, it's no problem, or I don't know what you're talking about, right? So that's very important. And legal threats are never the first step. Do not even joke about saying, hey, you need to fix this or else we'll send you a C and D. That is, you, that's not even in your head when you're first talking to somebody about, hey, we think this might not be right. So if we ever do need legal advice, and sometimes we do, not, not to do a C and D or something, but to tell us, hey, you know, is this, we don't like what they're doing with this brand here. We don't appreciate it. We don't think it really respects us. But is it legally a trademark issue? So it's absolutely important that the trademark committee, people on trademarks at, we have um, DLA Piper is a global internet, IP and trademark law firm. Um, you know, probably one of the top 10 in the world who are our pro bono clients. We have them on retainer. So if there are any legal questions, whether it's in your project, whether it's trademark, whether somebody outside asks it, you need to make sure that we coordinate that a responsible officer of the foundation talks to our counsel, our lawyers, to make sure we're answering it correctly. So trademarks is for anything about brands. There's legal-internal, which is for any specific legal question that any PMC needs answered. So if you say, you know, Somebody's reported this license problem in our module here. Do we have to take it out or not? That's what legal internal is for. And the VP of legal will make sure that your, project, your question's addressed and talk to counsel if needed and give you an answer. If you have general questions, theoretical questions, um, ones that aren't about a specific brand issue, 
there's legal-discuss, which is publicly archived. And that's where a lot of third parties and outside people come and say, you know, hey, can we use this part of your license? Or, hey, why isn't you know, CC BY allowable you know, as an Apache license uh, thing? Um, so that's, that's a place where you can find information and get discussion, but it's not a place where you will get a definitive answer about foundation policy. So some people assume if you open a ticket there that it necessarily will be setting policy. That, that may not happen. Um, so the, the nevers that PMC members should know is never grant legal permissions or exceptions without coordinating with trademarks. So the PMC members do not have the authority to say, yes, you can use that brand, or yes, you can go make yellow elephants. That's not how the policy is set. And never give legal advice unless you actually are a lawyer, but we already asked earlier, nobody here is a lawyer, so. Um, and never respond to an outside lawyer without checking with Apache lawyers. Because we actually, I mean, it's, it's incredibly rare, but we, the Apache Software Foundation has been subpoenaed for legal records in the past. And you know, it's not a huge issue, but when they send a subpoena, then we have our counsel work with Infra, and they troll through every single private archive of every mailing list to address the subpoena, which is just, tedious along with difficult. So trademarks responsibilities. So what will I do and my trademarks committee? Um, so trademarks, we set policy for the foundation. So the key way to ensure that all projects are seen as independent, which is part of the Apache brand, is that the Apache Software Foundation a Delaware corporation owns all project trademarks, and we hold them on behalf of our projects. So that ensures that even if a PMC gets taken over by some corporation's employees, that you know, I, and especially the board, are not going to allow that to you know, turn Apache Foo into Big Co's Foo. That's not, will never happen. Um, but otherwise, within the policies, no, I don't have any input on what you want your brand to be or what you want your logo to be. Several people have sent me things saying, you know, is this logo okay? I'm like, well, it looks kind of cute. Um, it has the feather, you know, put a TM on it, and, but it's your logo, uh, you know. We don't define direction for projects. The only things we define are the core rules, which are either, you know, hardcore infrastructure resources we have or legal restrictions. Um, and a few things about voting, which are community, but. Uh, so everything else is up to, to PMCs. Um, but we are here, trademarks and press and infra and community development, we're here to serve the needs of projects. So if you need help, if you want other ideas for how to do things, or you, know, you just wanna say, hey, you know, I know somebody's planning to do this branding campaign that will say blah, 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 you know, foo does X, ask, and we're here to help with that. So the biggest part of my job, which requires the most aspirin, is dealing with difficult users. So anytime we ask somebody, a third party, hey, we think you're using this wrong, could you please change? If they say no, or if they say, what the heck are you talking about? Um, or if they completely blow you off, which happens sometimes, um, or any time a lawyer writes back, then come get me. And either I or I'll work with the vice president of your project. Um, we need somebody who has a title. This is one of the very rare times when you need a title to do things because the people on the other end of this conversation eventually are gonna be some CEO or vice president of marketing or lawyer and I have seen cases where they completely blow off when you know, a respected project PMC member, who everybody around here knows, of course, you know, they do this, completely ignored. And I write a letter and I sign it, Vice President Brand Management. I get a response because some corporations, the title's important. You know, that's just how it is. So I need negotiations. I'll, do, I'll work with somebody from the PMC. I'll work with legal counsel if necessary. Uh, patience is required. So not only do I and the members of the Trademarks Committee, you know, we're all volunteers, and we have pro bono lawyers, but they 
you know, have paying clients, so sometimes there's a delay. And more importantly, many of these issues, even if you're really upset that somebody is saying, you know, they founded this project, and you, you know that, you know, your friend here did it, it takes time. So it's a process of negotiation. Not in negotiation in what am I gonna decide that I'll allow them to do, but negotiation in, no, you really need to do this. Yes, I understand your point, but see, we really have this trademark, I can show you this other stuff. Here are, here are how ways I could make your life difficult if you don't change. Um, that takes time. So, so I know some projects get frustrated that it's not happening faster. Please, you just need to be patient. And uh, legal threats are never the second step. So I would never say cease and desist or actually have our lawyers call them um, at this point. I would talk. So legal action might happen. Never the right place to start. So one important thing is consider the public reaction. So if you do send a C&D letter, raise your hand. In the past year, have you seen on Slashdot or some news site it, you know, a thing where C&D has blown up in somebody's face, where some popular cartoonist you know, got a C&D and then made cartoons about it? Happened a couple times last year. So when you go to a legal arena, it's a much bigger picture um, in terms of publicity for either side as well as actual litigation is extremely expensive. Actually getting a court to understand the, the differences, especially in software, is really, really, really hard. So, not gonna happen. So, if we don't have results from some firm, polite, and private discussion, um, then we have other actions before we actually have to have the lawyers actively do something. So, we could issue a press release from the ASF on the official wire stating our case. And there are some cases where, you know, a company is trying to capitalize on our brand by co-opting it somehow, which happens fairly often. If they're involved in the community or if they're actually caring about the technology in the bigger picture, how would it look if Apache says, hey, they're doing it wrong? So in some cases, I think that actually is a fairly big stick. We've really never done that. Um, but the Apache brand in a lot of technical cir circles is very strong. So um, more importantly, I am more than happy for some vendor who truly does not respect one of our project brands uh, to turn to the board and tell the board, hey, this company is not, not responding. They are not being respectful of our process, of our way. Uh, would you please take all of their employees and boot them from the project management committee? Because if some company is not responding respectful enough to respect our brands, then even though we treat people as individuals when we can, it's obvious that many people who are employees, you know, legally when you really get down to it, who pays you is more important in most cases, and certainly in any legal way, than where you hang out and volunteer. So it's inappropriate for a company who truly does not respect our brand to be able to participate in project governance. And of course the you know, other side effect of that would be, in many cases, people would notice that the PMC was suddenly different. I'm sure somebody would have mentioned it. And I'm sure that people in the community, especially from any other vendor, um, especially a bunch of other Apache members, all of whom are passionate about the Apache brand overall, are going to start talking about it and blogging about it and say, man, that company really sucks, you know? They've gotten kicked out. They really don't get it. I can't believe it. So again, public pressure which is not, you know, for any company that's, that wants to be able to participate, that if they're trying to co-opt the brand and they're basing that much of their strategy on this technology, if we remove their ability to influence that technology, they're gonna listen. So those are ways that we try to deal with things rather than actually dealing with lawyers. But if we need to, we have some excellent lawyers. They're actually very nice. So thank yous and resources. <clears throat> So, community over code, and I really mean it when I say thank you for coming to my talk, because it's good to talk to people, it's good to hear feedback. It's, it's nice to be, you know, somebody wants to hear me. Uh, so thank you to all the Apache members who have built the Apache Software Foundation, have figured out this way to do stuff, that's, that's important. Thank you to all the Apache committers and PMC members, because while we may have built the model, you are the ones actually accomplishing our mission 
of giving away software. Uh, thank you to all the members of the Apache Trademarks Committee. And if you all turn around, sitting in the back row, is David Nally, who is a uh, Apache member and has been doing a great job helping out, answering questions, and so on. And thanks to our DLA Paper Council. So Mark Radcliffe actually is a senior counsel, runs a number of like open source governance think tank events and so on, which I'm still trying to get myself invited to, um, along with a number of other lawyers. And of course, it's great because I get email reminders from them about all sorts of things. They have, you know, all the legal secretaries say, hey, you need to sign this thing. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Thank you. So, and a big thank you to anybody here who does work for a software vendor who is, is doing a good job of respecting Apache project brands. So we really appreciate that, both the input of code and ideas as well as respect for the brands. Uh, so I just have a page on links on the, on the website. So really, the project independence is important to think about in terms of, you know, think about your project in that way, in terms of the bigger picture of your project serving the public good. Obviously, you do it for your company or whatever, but that's important. Um, and the policy for PMC website. So there's, there's really two parts to that. There's the project branding policy, how you need to present yourself there's some legal issues and so on. And then the PMC responsibilities, where I tried to write basically a list of, you really need to think about these things, kind of a, a version of this slide, these slides. Um, and again, if there are questions, then, again, this is one case where you use private list if you, if you want. Trademarks at is private, or the PMC list for any relevant project. Um, so that's all I have. I will have just five minutes for questions and then lunch. Thank you. So do we have any other questions? Um, I'm not a uh, PMC kind of guy, so. <laughs> That's fine. So <clears throat> two questions. The first is, um, how about book title? If somebody's going to write a book about some of the There, We have an FAQ for that one. That one we actually do have an FAQ for. Um, so there's a difference between our brand policy and the traditional software vendor brand policy, where a software vendor really wants to control it. In our case, fundamentally, the ASF and our projects produce two things. We produce software products, and we produce some basic support. And fundamentally, as a nonprofit, we're not going to publish books, right? We don't have any paid staff for consulting. So books, in particular, especially published books, because book publishers you know, already check this stuff out, right? So they're going to do a decent job of, of attributing the trademark. So as long as they provide us an attribution, um, and as long as it's a factual title, the prod project name in the title Apache foo, preferably, please. Uh, it's fine. You don't need permission. Well, that's a good question also. Because um, I know in some of the packaging of an actual release release, they start dropping Apache off and just use the project name. Uh, where specifically are you uh, saying in that? In my case, uh, uh, I use uh, Alexander Solar. So the, the Apache's name, the actual file name, used to be Apache there. Oh, the file names. Yeah, I don't care. Okay. I mean, a, a file name but it was is. Like a And it's not a brand issue because uh, file names are not really trademarks. It's, I mean, that's what we, that's the physical thing we get, but the average consumer of goods understands that you, you know, for software, you go to the website and you see, you know, Apache Derby, download Derby here. Apache Derby is what they think in their head. That's the brand. And the file name is just some outer pack. I mean, similar, similarly with um, Java package names and so on. No, the first and most prominent ones. And then they can just use the project. If that makes sense, certainly. I, just, I, do, I do need to you know, ask a lot of companies, like if the company puts out a press release saying they you know, do this great service for Hadoop, I ask them, in the title and the first instance, Apache Hadoop. Um, but after that, it's fine. That, that's plenty to preserve our trademark rights. And it's plenty for the, just the user understanding Apache Hadoop, Hadoop they, they get it. Right? That's fine. Uh, Yes. Yes, it's preferred. It's always preferred to use the Apache food form of the name.
No, we, we, I mean, that's something that... Because it made the title... <clears throat> no, I understand. Um, that's one of the questions where I really want everybody to do it, and I'm going to say publicly, you need to do that. But legally, depending on the mark, I can't, I couldn't legally force them to do that. However, the policy is going to say, you have to do that. Also, I think, like, Bart in a lot of cases, the project name by itself is trademarked as well as... Yes, yes, oh yes. And, and we're doing, it's really annoying doing, dealing with lawyers because Hadoop is a reg registered trademark, but Apache Hadoop is not because that's a separate application and because there are other issues with explaining to trademark attorneys, you know, what does Apache mean? How do you download an Apache if it's software, right? Or how can I sign up for a consulting contract for Apache that will tell me how to do open source? So it's a house brand, it, it's, it's our way of thinking, but that's hard to explain to trademark people, so we're working on on that part of registration. We have an FAQ for that. Yes, two FAQs out of like the total of six I've actually published. Um, that's the powered by um, FAQ. So way back when the web server originally actually had a separate logo that said powered by Apache HTTP. Um, so you can use that freely. If your, if your product includes whichever Apache product software in it, you can say, you know, big co, co super thing powered by Apache Foo, and you don't need permission. Well, they did do that, but I think they might have said four. If, they, if, if it's a, so the, the purpose is they have to have a brand. We have our brand, our Apache Foo brand, and in between needs to be a clear separator. Okay, so plug-in plug -in architectures are well understood in software. So if you say this is the plug-in for Apache CloudStack, people aren't, there's no confusion, because if you know what CloudStack is, you know, oh, CloudStack is this thing, and you plug stuff in. And the vendor is this thing. So that's fine, as long as the distinction well, is clear. Case, a, a, a brand, a so it's like real-time search for Apache blank. So can I, can I download real-time search for Apache blank and run it as a software product? Can I download that thing? No, but can I download that thing? Yeah, yeah. And that's how they were, they were pitching it. They said, okay. announcing real, uh, real time search for Apache forward as their thing. Okay. With, with all caps and letters. Yeah. It, it came up, and I mentioned it in there in our email list, and people were like, uh, maybe, but we're busy with other stuff. So. Yeah, there, there's a, there's, if you search for Apache powered by FAQ, it'll come up the thing. Okay. Right. Um, but, but in some cases, they can do it. And yes, in that format. And it has to have the Apache with it. And don't use the word dis distribution, even though Hadoop does that. The, the separator, the, the problem is that you need to list it. Uh, the separator is important, and it's also that separate brand. So CloudStack, for instance, has a nice plugin for Apache CloudStack, uh, which is not a name or brand check or anything, but that's a good search for it. Oh, well, I, I would, so, and then again, is that a trademark? So a trademark council would need to look at the actual web page and see the impression that a person gets when they click on something that gets a piece of software that then runs. You know, that may not really be what the trademark people would say is the brand. That's just a description of the thing, and somewhere else is what you would say the brand is. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if you, ever see, if you ever see a press release on the wire, not just like some company's blog, but an actual press release, if it has the About Apache Software Foundation at the bottom, 
then it had better have come from Sally. Because that is, press releases, like a little blurb at the bottom that says the company, that you have to have explicit permission from the company to do that. And we actually have a couple places where companies said, oh, we're doing a joint press release with Apache. And we're like, no. Um, so, so the, just a question that summarizes my own work. So the idea of using the Apache brand name in a title for a third party package is that you're just using it rather than trying to, using it for, as a reference yes. rather than using it as naming your brand. Exactly. Yeah. You're, you're saying, we have super thing and it does something cool with Apache thing. It, it, it effectively becomes dominant. Dominant is yes. at that point. You're describing super thing integrates with this stuff, and that's why you care. It's not yeah. it, it's super thing integrates with to is not your brand. It's super thing has to be your brand. Yep. Okay, thank you. So it's um, lunchtime. I don't want to keep anybody any longer for lunch, but I am happy to answer questions. Although I think I have lunch right now, but I will be around all week. So don't forget to tip the waiter on the way out. Thank you.